For over 135 years, St. Cloud State University has stood here on the banks of the Mississippi River. Its long history is filled with many fascinating stories of those who attended this school and those who never left. You see, this long history isn't completely filled with SESU's academics or alumni. Unfortunate circumstances, tragedies, and other misunderstandings caused several St. Cloud State tenants to die here. A few of the many buildings which scatter the campus hold stories. These stories which the university would prefer not to be unveiled. They are stories of lost souls. Souls which still roam the old corridors of the places they were lost. Rumors and suspicion have led many to share these stories. Scratches, moving shadows, strange noises, and other odd occurrences have left many convinced that no one is ever alone at St. Cloud State University. In 1969, Minnesota was just over 10 years old. St. Cloud residents were enthusiastic for a new education forum in the village. On February 16th, the State Normal School Board selected the Stearns House as a site for the third state school to formally educate teachers. This was the early makings of what would one day be a thriving university. As the school grew, a three-story main building was erected in 1874 to enlarge class capacity. Ten years later, Lawrence Hall was added as a women's dormitory named in honor of Isabel Lawrence, who was the model school supervisor. Completed in 1913, Riverview was added as a school for preparing young teachers. This new addition attracted many new students to the campus, and demand for living spaces increased. Only two short years later, Shoemaker Hall joined the growing campus as the premier women's dormitory. And this is where our story begins. Early in the 1900s, Shoemaker Hall was a very independent building, with its own kitchen, dining hall, and janitorial staff. At the time, a female student on the campus of what was then called the St. Cloud Normal School had an affair with a janitor. From the records we uncovered, the young girl's name can only be speculated. Several names came up, but as best as can be put together, the young girl's name was Pepe. Upon learning she had become pregnant, Pepe walked to the downstairs kitchen area, where in the corner of a room is a meat locker used to store refrigerated goods for the kitchen. Pepe fastened a noose, hung it from the ceiling, and ended two lives. As the years have passed, there have been countless stories of strange noises emulating from the locker, which today is used for a storage area for building supplies. However, the noises are not limited to this dark basement. Students throughout the generations have passed stories of strange noises and occurrences. Staff, who have worked in the building for many years, speculate the truth to these rumors. However, there always seems to be that one story they can't explain. Um, except for um, last summer, um, I was downstairs in the basement area, which is just off of the kitchen, and um, there's an old bathroom down there that generally doesn't get used, and I was in there changing my clothes, and um, 
while I was changing my clothes, well, actually, I was done changing my clothes, and I swooped down to pick up this little pile of clothing, you know, and as I was swooped down to pick up that pile of clothing, I could see a shadow of somebody walking because there's this, there's a little bit of space underneath the door, you know, and a little on the side, and I just caught this shadow going by, and across the hallway is my actual break room that I share with men and I had left the door open in there and my purse was in there and you know so my immediate thought was you know if somebody's my, I got a purse just right across the hallway then and nobody's there so immediately when I seen the shadow and I was already dressed I had my clothes in my hand I ran to the door opened it up and there was nobody and so I quick ran around in the area and seen nobody and that was my first only experience to wonder I was like, okay, what's this all about? It cannot be explained why Pepe would have a reason to remain in Shoemaker. Is it unfinished business? Is it an endless guilt for her affair? Perhaps no one will ever know. This is a story that has passed through many people, and all anyone can do is wonder. I'm not, I'm not threatened by the fact that there could be ghosts. I don't know, you know, to me it would be like this lost soul, you know, this soul that got stuck somewhere and just didn't pass from here to the next whatever is out there. Um, yeah, it's like this person's stuck somewhere in between. No one can be certain as to why paranormal events occur. Experts who study ghosts say that no one theory has ever been confirmed. Ghosts are thought to be lost souls, souls that for some reason have not moved on to wherever the dead go. St. Cloud State University, like most Centennial schools, has a vast history of ghost stories. One of the oldest buildings on campus, Riverview, first held classes back in 1913. One of the teachers from this era is still regularly reported to be roaming these halls, and people continue to report strange occurrences to this day. Um, my first semester here at St. Cloud State, I was in a literature class um, on the second floor of the Riverview building, and we were all just sitting there, class is almost about to let out, when we heard a really loud bang from the end of the hallway echo through the whole building. And it sounded like a door slamming, we didn't really think much of it. Um, the professor kept on lecturing. Um, we all just, you know, sat there waiting for class to get out. Then we heard another loud bang, which also sounded like a door slamming. And it was a little bit closer. And finally we heard a third, and it was another door slamming, but it was a little bit closer. We heard a fourth and then a fifth, and then our door slammed. Um, and our door opened up into the room, so it would have been impossible for anyone to just, you know, shut it from the outside without us noticing. Someone would have actually had to reach into the room and pull the door shut. So what basically happened is all the doors in the hallway, one after the other, slammed shut. And we all just sat there speechless. Um, it echoed through the whole building, and we didn't know what to do. The professor kind of brushed it off, said, oh, strange things happen in this building. Um, you know, it's probably nothing. And she asked for one of us to go and open up the door. <laughs> well, we all just sat there. Nobody wanted to go touch the door. Um, she finally went and opened it up herself. Everyone that I've told that story to has had, you know, a couple of stories to tell me about their experiences in Riverview. Um, I've also heard children in the basement, um, children playing, balls bouncing, and I've heard footsteps. Um, on the other two floors, it sounds like someone maybe with high heels walking around. And they say that there is a lady up there. It should be noted that when shooting video for this production, we reenacted doors slamming and footsteps echoing in the halls. Students were unsettled and came to inspect our camera crew. However, it would appear that such events as this have actually become routine to the staff who frequent the Riverview building. So I was working at the Writing Center Sunday, this was probably in January, and 
the writing center had closed at four o'clock, but I'd stayed on to do some homework because I needed to use the computers and stuff. And the janitor came around a little after four and locked all the doors, so no one could get into the building, but I could still get out. And I was alone in there, probably working for about an hour. It was probably around five o'clock. It was getting pretty dark, and I started hearing noises up above me, but kind of like farther down the hall on the second floor. And I thought it was strange because no one was in the building that I knew of. So I left the room and walked out into the hallway on the main floor and I could still hear the noises. They seemed to be coming from upstairs, but there were no lights on up there. So I went downstairs because sometimes the grad students are in their offices. I was just curious if anyone was around. All the doors were locked. No one was downstairs. I walked back upstairs and the noises had stopped. So I went back to work in the right place. And I was probably working about another half hour and I started to hear the noises louder again. And this time they were right above me in the classroom, right above the writing center. And it sounded like someone sliding desks around and then kind of walking around the room and then maybe like the sound of high heels walking down the hall to the other end of the building and then back and then more kind of sliding, the doors shutting. So I figured someone has to be in the building. I knew some professors had offices up there. So again, I walked out into the hall, but the lights were still off upstairs. And I think all the lights in Riverview are on motion detectors. So if someone was walking around, the light should be on. So again, the noises seemed to stop once I was out in the hallway, so I went back into the writing center, and then they started occurring again above me very loudly, and there was more up and down the halls, people walking around. So this time I walked out, and I walked right to the edge of the stairs on the first floor, and the upstairs lights flashed on. And then I freaked out, and I went back to the writing center and got all my stuff, and pretty much ran out of the building.